The deadliest animal in the entire world is probably the human being. Yeah, not exactly something to brag about. But what animal do you think takes the number two spot? Lions? Sharks? Snakes? Well, while those would all be good guesses, the second deadliest animal in the entire world causing millions of deaths a year is actually... The mosquito. Not all mosquitoes are deadly, of course. I mean, there are actually a bunch of them breeding in the drain outside of my apartment right now, and while they are annoying, the worst that they do is leave me with a few itchy bite marks. In fact, generally speaking, mosquitoes are actually considered to be vegetarians. They usually feed on nectar from plants, and it's only during pregnancy that certain varieties of female mosquitoes feed on blood, as it contains the nutrients they need to help their eggs grow. You could even argue that when it comes to the huge amount of death that is blamed on mosquitoes, the real culprits are the diseases and viruses that the pesky insects inadvertently infect people with, like Zika, Dengue Fever, Yellow Fever, and worst of all, responsible for almost half a million deaths in 2015 alone, Malaria. Those who are unlucky enough to catch this disease find themselves with high fevers, shaking chills, and other flu-like symptoms, and if it goes untreated, it can result in death. Malaria is especially life-threatening to those with weaker immune systems, like pregnant women and young children. In fact, a whopping two-thirds of malaria deaths are in children under the age of five, meaning that one child dies of malaria every two minutes. What's more, because malaria causes so much illness and death, the disease can be a huge drain on national economies. And since many of the countries where malaria is most prevalent are among the poorer nations of the world, it maintains this horrible cycle of disease and poverty. Now, all of this is despite the fact that malaria is an entirely treatable and preventable disease, and yet 3.2 billion people are still at risk of getting it. So, what can we do? Well, unfortunately, although treatment for malaria does exist, it's not always accessible for people who need it. So maybe a better question to ask is, for those people who are at risk, how do we prevent them from getting malaria in the first place? Well, to answer that, it's helpful to know exactly how the disease spreads. The cycle begins with someone who has already been infected with malaria. It isn't contagious, so you can't get it just from touching or being near someone who has it. Because malaria is found in the blood, it needs to catch a ride in order to get from one organism to another. Enter the mosquito. When one of these insects bites an infected animal, malaria parasites, known as plasmodia, wait inside of the mosquito until they can enter a new host via the mosquito's saliva when it feeds again. One particularly gruesome thing these plasmodia do is after they've spent up to a month multiplying inside cells in the liver, they make their way into the bloodstream wearing the membranes of the liver cells that they've killed in order to camouflage themselves from the body's immune system. Gross. Clearly, these little parasites are tenacious, and their ability to evolve and adapt makes it difficult to create a universal vaccine to treat the disease, which is why preventing people from getting it in the first place is the focus. Fortunately though, we do have a method for preventing malaria which we know works, and which is incredibly cost-effective. And that is the mosquito net. Typically, mosquitoes bite at night, so for people in areas where they are at risk of the disease, having them sleep under a net helps to keep them protected. Plus, the nets are treated with insecticide, so when the mosquitoes do attempt to bite, they're not only repelled away, but 24 hours later, those mosquitoes are no longer a problem. So, all we need to do is get mosquito nets to the people in need, right? Well, while that simple solution might seem obvious, there's actually much more that goes into net distribution than you might expect. After all, giving someone a net isn't going to help if that person doesn't know how they're supposed to use it. In fact, some people who receive nets actually try and use them for fishing, they really aren't going to be of any use to people receiving them if they don't understand what malaria is in the first place. This is where Plan International Canada comes in, as the bulk of their malaria prevention efforts are focused on both distributing nets and showing people how and why to use them. For example, they train community health workers in malaria prevention, detection, and treatment. But they also have more inventive solutions, like teaching songs to schoolchildren about the disease which they can then bring back home to teach their families and their communities. Plan International Canada also take extra care working with communities to make sure that everyone who needs a net gets one. 
This includes going door to door in rural, hard to reach areas and addressing other obstacles such as gender inequality and literacy. What's more, these efforts are working. Since the year 2000, malaria mortality rates have fallen 60% globally, and an estimated 6.8 million malaria deaths have been averted since 2001. However, there is still much more work to be done, as in 2015, an estimated 47% of people at risk of malaria didn't sleep under a treated net. But you can help. Why not join Plan International Canada in their malaria reduction work by registering for the Spread the Net Student Challenge? Every year, students across Canada fundraise for life-saving bed nets that go directly to countries throughout Africa that have the highest instances of malaria. In fact, together, they have distributed over 19 million nets. So, be sure to sign your school up today. I'm Charlie McDonnell, and don't forget, one net costs 10 bucks, which saves lives. Thanks for watching.